Hey y'all, Scott, um, Scout here. Today, I'm gonna try doing something different from my usual videos. Today, we're going to attempt to progress as far as we can in Jato, also known as Jukes Towers of Hell, without taking damage. Now, you might be wondering, what the hell is a Jato? What damage? And what happened to H by Kaishimi? To explain briefly, Jukes Towers of Hell is an oppy game based around parkouring in a tower filled with different obstacles. There are some towers where you have to descend, and some towers have sections where you have to go sideways, but generally, you have to ascend up a tower in order to complete it. As mentioned previously, there are many different obstacles, including kill bricks, x-pushers, rotating bricks, and others. Now the thing that interests us is kill bricks. See, in your normal Roblox hobby made by Fat Paps or something, when you touch a kill brick, you instantly die. But in Jato, things are a little different. See, instead of dying, you take 5 damage, which in normal circumstances is basically nothing, but in other, harder towers, 5 health points can mean a lot. Before we start off, let's establish some rules. First off, we are not allowed to take any damage throughout our entire journey through the Great Inferno. This includes damage from Ouch Bricks and other Kill Brick variants. If we do take damage, we have to hold down R and restart our run. Second, we are allowed to use T-Bows for the purposes of squeezing through spaces. Wait, actually, hold on, I'll ask the JTO Discord server. Oh, they don't seem to care. Eh, I guess I'll just allow it. Uh, if you're patient enough, you might be able to beat these, but I'm not. Third, I will only be covering World 1 throughout this series, because, come on. And fourth, I am allowed to do everything else that helps me, not including boost items. This includes glitches, lag, and purchasable non-boost items. Oh, and also, to track my progress easier, I will be using a different account. No more damage, Jato. He looks beautiful. Anyways, that's all the rules. If I forgot to mention something, I'll just mention it when necessary. I will leave all the full runs of each tower in the description in case you want to watch through them for whatever reason if you think I'm cheating. But anyways, now that I've introduced you to the basics of this challenge, let's dive in to Ring 1! Now, I haven't actually made it clear how difficult this challenge really is. You see, taking damage is a fundamental part of the game and many towers utilize kill bricks to provide stress to the player. To really show you, I will be heading to the first tower, Tower of Annoyingly Simple Trials, and already off the bat we can't even complete the first tower. At floor 3, there is a speed section with a kill brick that we can't jump over. There's no way we can do it, and I have done my research and I see people saying laugh gliding could get us through these jumps, but I highly doubt it could get us past the next jump. And also, laugh clipping has been patched, so sadly this tower can already be knocked off as unbeatable. Although thankfully, our next tower is another really easy one, Tower of Anger, and this one gives me a lot more hope than the other one. Our first challenge comes at floor 2 with some simple conveyor jumps and is easily manageable, but then we get to floor 5, which is a nightmare kill brick maze with dreadful 3 and 4 stud squeezes. I tried to beat this section without typos for a while, but I gave up and just did it the dirty way, although I am fairly certain it's possible. If you thought that was hard, prepare yourself for floor 10! Floor 10 has insanely tight jumps that are very stressful, considering if I take damage here, I have to restart my entire run. I managed to complete this part after only one failed attempt, so it was surprisingly not even that bad. After those kill bricks, just a bit more walking, and you're at the wind pad, making Tower of Anger our first completed tower. Our next tower is Tower of Madness. This tower starts off easy, having a few basic wraps, and then- OH MY GOD, WHAT THE HELL IS THIS?! This tower just went from medium to challenging pretty quick. Now at first I thought this was just a really difficult section, but sadly once I got to the final KB of floor 2, I found out that I wasted my time at this jump here is impossible. How exciting. <sighs> Except it's possible. I don't know how to describe what dark magic you have to do, but you have to sort of jump to the side and try to climb on the platform, at least that's what I did. It's really strange. Compared to this, the rest of the tower is a breeze, with only this section of floor 5 being slightly worrying, but it's doable, just need to be careful. After you do those jumps, the only thing standing between you and victory is fairly easy gameplay, and once you climb the final trust to victory, you finally complete Tower of Madness without taking any damage. But there's still more, because we still have many more towers to go, including the classic, Tower of Hick. At first I thought this tower would be a breeze, until I got to floor 9. 
The jumps here are really tight and hard to do, but it's not that bad. But sadly, our run ends at floor 10, because there are kill jumps we can't avoid. And I thought that it was possible. Oh well. Our next tower is the Tower of Killjoys. My run ended quicker than I thought it would, ending at floor 1. This jump is too long for us to jump over, and there are no other ways of getting around it, so Tower of Killjoys is also impossible to do. But not all hope is lost, because our next tower is Tower of Keyboard Eating. I expected the same fate as Tower of Killjoys or something, but despite these jumps being a bit hard, they aren't too bad. The only real challenge we have is Floor 6, but even that isn't that bad. The only hard part about this tower is actually completing it, which is what I had the most issues with. But other than that, we don't have to have second thoughts about climbing to the wind pad. Our next tower is the Tower of Stress, and this is where the real fun begins. At first I was confident about this tower being possible, but then I got to floor 5. Most people don't find that much difficulty in this section, but let me tell you a little secret. I am bad at this game. Although this isn't even the worst part. I managed to get through it a lot, although it still caused me some stress. <laughs> I didn't even realize that I included that. Oh my f***ing god. Apart from the killbrick spinner at floor 6, we don't encounter any more killbricks until here, floor 9. These killbrick jumps are very tight and hard to do, but then we get to our first roadblock. This jump here is impossible to do, and sadly our run ends here. Or does it? You see, I've got a trick up my sleeve, and it's interesting. So to do this jump, you first have to jump over these kill bricks before, obviously, and then stop in between these two kill bricks. These give you enough space to turn around 90 degrees, and while this isn't necessary, it makes this trick a lot easier. Now, you want to jump onto the frame and start wall hopping. Wall hopping is a technique where in between two parts you turn your character 45 degrees, preferably with the alignment keys, and hop up or across. Now, you want to wall hop to this gap in the wall over here and hope you don't fall to your doom. And if you have succeeded in doing that, then congratulations. As long as you don't mess up, you have beaten the Tower of Stress. This section took me over 30 attempts and 2 hours of practice, but I actually did it and it's possible. Thank, to, thank you to Bradio for this idea. Without him, I'd totally be stumped here. Well, now it's time to punch screens and ponder our decisions on if I should waste my time on these towers or go to practice time just to check, because we are talking about Tower of Screen Punching. Other than not being able to play this tower because your screen broke, you can't beat this tower anyway because of Floor 8. How lovely. At Floor 8, there is a kill brick you have to jump on in order to progress, but don't worry, we can just lag high jump. However, there is this transition from Floor 8 to Floor 9 with a kill brick head hitter, and I'm sure there are more kill bricks we can't avoid, so I'll just not do this tower anymore. It gives me bad memories. And now, we move on to Tower of Rage. Unsurprisingly, this tower is impossible, and our first roadblock happens at Floor 2 with these spinners. So sadly, our run ends here. Psych! It's time for me to go mentally insane! These spinners are 100% possible, and here's how. Pay close attention to the keystrokes in the bottom left. When a killer brick has turned around 45 degrees, I jump backwards. I then hold down A and then finish it off by holding down W to come back on the platform. All of this has to be done while holding down the spacebar because this is an ice platform. If you repeat this enough times, you can get to the edge and be safe from the kill bricks. It sounds really complicated, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. It's basically like doing a wraparound, just a lot more stressful and it's moving. Anyways, our next obstacle is this wobbly platform. For this, you have to jump in the middle right of the platform to wobble it, then jump up and jump onto this platform. Floor 3 is our next encounter with kill bricks. For this section, I highly recommend T-Pose. To do it, you have to jump and then move somewhere around the peak of your jump, once you're just above the kill brick, and then land on the second or third stud. Repeat this pattern until the section is done and you complete this nightmare of a section. Our last kill brick encounter is at floor 4, but it is fairly easy compared to what we just did. Just make sure you don't take damage while jumping. And then, once you complete all of that, this tower is pretty much free. All you have to do is just complete the rest of the tower with maximum stress, and after all of that, you have just completed Tower of Rage Damage List. Woohoo! This tower took me multiple hours and over 80 attempts, so make sure to mentally prepare yourself if you try this tower. And now, it's time for the Tower of Impossible Expectations. For the psychologically unsafe towers in Ring 1 and Forgotten Ridge, I'll just say what I need to say quickly since these towers are obviously not possible. So again, TOIE at floor 2, there are two killbrick platforms you have to jump on in order to progress. Next, Citadel of Laptop Splitting is not possible because of floor 5. 
you need to walk on a kill brick platform to get to an outside section we can't skip. Next, Tower of True Skill Floor 4 has these one stud kill bricks we can't avoid. I thought this tower was possible at first since it's purest, but I guess not. Oh well. Thanos Tower is the last tower in Ring 1, and is the soul crushing of this ring, but what do you expect? Now I'm not sure how far you can make it exactly, but I am fairly certain you can do Floor 2 because you can jump over the spinners, but you need god timing. Then everything up to the second tower crossing is possible, but where your run definitely ends is the, the third tower crossing because of this section. Oh well, was it in the mood to beat a soul crushing anyway? So that's all of Ring 1 checked, but I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, neat is obviously possible. What did you expect? There aren't even kill bricks at this mini tower. Alright, so 6 out of the 14, or 5 out of the 13 towers, are possible to complete without ever taking damage. With this amount of towers, we can access Ring 2! But I'll hold my horses and do Ring 1 sub-realm first to gather some tower points. Welcome to Forgotten Ridge, Ring 1 sub-realm. This place can save us a lot later on, so let's take a look at which towers we can complete without touching granite textured bricks and losing health points. Suck on my d- I mean, steeple of meaningless decision seems like the type of steeple to be beatable, but surprisingly at floor 2 there is a kill brick jump we can't do. For some reason you can do it sometimes, but it's probably lag. I'll come back to the steeple later if necessary. The next beginner steeple is Steeple of Pursuit. There are no kill bricks apart from the rising lava up to floor 4. There is a KB walk in multiple places that we can't avoid at this specific floor, so that's another loss. But it's okay, because our next tower is the Tower of Jolly Good Fun. We encounter our first quote-unquote challenge on floor 2. With these simple jumps, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna say much. You're pretty much meant to jump over these lava bricks. There's no particularly hard parts in this tower, so let's not waste time and move on to our next steeple. Which is Sour, also known as Steeple of Uninstalling Roblox. It's pretty much same old, same old. Floor 1 has basic jumps, Floor 2 has this slightly worrying long jump, and this very worrying wedge jump, but they're both doable. Floor 3 has some conveyor kill rip jumps straight out of Tower of Anger, but thankfully there are some slightly interesting jumps at Floor 5 that make me not want to fall asleep. After that, do some easy jumps and you have completed Sour. GG. It's a fairly easy steeple, but it gives us a free tower point, so I'll take it I guess. Although our next tower is... Tower of Versatility. Let's just get straight to the point. Floor 4 has this conveyor kill brick section that's pretty much the entire floor. Everything is avoidable, however, you need to pay a lot of attention to your surroundings. Floor 6 has a fairly simple spinner section. As long as you take your time, you should be fine. There's also these kill brick wraparounds that could cause some stress. Floor 7 has the semi-maze section. It is doable, but you have to take your time and make sure that your character doesn't glitch and go halfway down the stud or whatever this bug is. Floor 9 is the most stressful and the worst floor of TOV. Not only do you have to walk along a two stud platform while a kill brick is in front of you, but you have to do the worst jump in the entire tower, which is insanely inconsistent for me. Floor 10 also has this section with simple KB jumps that might be worrying, but it isn't even that bad. After that, the wind pad is pretty much just above you. Sadly, today is Friday the 13th as of writing this script, so I will not attempt this tower because, um, because of that, because, oh, I'm cursed, so I won't complete this tower because I won't be, I'll have bad luck, oh no. I will only attempt this tower when necessary, as it is insanely punishing and difficult, being extremely long and having one of the most inconsistent jumps at the end of the tower. I thought I could o overcome any challenge, no matter the cost but I'll put this tower on hold due to a strict video release and me having pretty much no time to practice and complete this tower. I only checked this tower recently as well, so I apologize for not finishing this tower. But let's not cry and move on. Steeple of Low Woe is the tower I will talk about now. On the third jump, you have to take damage. Moving on to... Oh gosh. Tower of Immense Ire. Alright, let's dive into this tower. In case you don't know, this tower has a lot of kill bricks. And I mean a lot. But anyways, let's take a look at every floor and see how to avoid mostly every kill brick. Floor 1 and 2 are pretty straightforward. Floor 3 is when things get interesting though. These two spinners are easily avoidable though. My strategy for this part is to stay left on the first two jumps and jump on the right side for the rest. I will skip over some of the other KBs because again, pretty straightforward. Although on this spinning platform, make sure to stand on the edge and use shift lock to turn yourself around 180 degrees instead of turning around normally. 
Floor 4 is one of the most confusing floors, but once you get the gist of it, it's really simple. For this section, just wait for the spinner to be in a specific position, although this conveyor part is a little weirder. I don't know how to explain this part, but I guess just wait for the spinner to be in a good position. The background footage should show when to jump. For this next part, again, wait for the spinner to be in this position, and then jump on the first part. Jump over the two spinners, then run over to the top and jump. And that's floor 4. It's mostly about getting the spinners to be in a good position. And once you know how to do it, this floor should be a walk in the slightly dangerous Kilbrick Park. Floor 5 has two hard KB sections. This wrap here should be treated like a 9 stud and should be done with T-pos, and this section can be cheesed by going to the very edge and using T-pos. After this floor, my heart rate usually goes up a bit. Floor 6 has this conveyor with simple kill brick jumps. Just try to time the jumps right, and please be extremely careful. After that, there are no more damage bricks on this floor. Floor 7 starts off with a slightly worrying KB safety net outside section, but it's easy. The hard part of this floor comes at the spinner section. With this one, I recommend waiting for the spinners to pass and then jump with timing. Basically try to follow what I do in the footage. It looks a lot harder than it actually is, but I can assure you this is a fairly simple obstacle compared to some of the other things that await us. Like Floor 8, which has an outside section filled with kill bricks. All of them are fairly simple, apart from this one, where you have to wait for all the spinners to go down and then run for your life, although it isn't that hard. The inside of floor 8 is also nothing to worry about, just dodge a single part and go to the truss. And then, floor 9, easily one of the hardest and most stressful floors in TOII. For this section, just go on the very edge and use T-pose. At this tilted KB part, be careful! Keep jumping and rush this part, or else you will take damage. I learned this the hard way. This part with the spinning platform and kill bricks looks confusing, but just jump over the kill brick spinners at the right time and you should be fine. DON'T rush the thin platform part. Seriously, don't. Again, learned it the hard way. And finally, floor 10. While it only has one KB section, it is one of the hardest sections in the entire tower, so be careful. The edges of the conveyor are safe spots, you can use them to calm down. For this middle section, it's not as easy as you think. Try to stay in the middle and make sure the spinners are in a good position. For the third section of the conveyor, look backward, not forward. Use S to move towards the end. And finally, after all that, you reach the end of the tower. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Congratulations, you have completed the Tower of Immense Ire. Wow, that was a journey. Anyways, now let's move on to the next tower. Or wait, it's a steeple. Steeple of Wall Punching. Thankfully, I don't have to write a paragraph about this steeple because your run ends at floor 3. Whew, that was close. Up next is Tower of Triangular Covering. Floor 2 has a KB Witch section that isn't possible to cross. I know it looks possible, but after trying for like 5 minutes I gave up. Oh well, next steeple. Steeple of Climbing has no kill bricks, so it's just a free challenging point pretty much. Anyways, it's speedrun time. Steeple of Huge Pain, it's in the name, obviously not possible. 2 jumps in, you have a KB walk we cannot avoid. Next, Tower of Dangerous Expeditions is possible up until floor 7. We have to hit our head on the Kilbrick ceiling for the jump. Yes, everything before is possible, don't ask how. Next, Tower of Increasing Stress is not possible because Floor 2 has a button route where you have to take damage. How disappointing. Next, Steeple of Towering Pillars is impossible due to Floor 1 having a Kilbrick platform that we have to use to progress. Next, Citadel of Weird Nostalgia. Oh hey look, it's Tower of Anger. Ooh, ooh, and there's Tower of Keyboard Eating. Ah, and there's good old Tower of Rage. Fun times. Anyway, count isn't possible because of the TOTF section. You have to walk on a killbrick platform to progress. Well, that's Forgotten Rich fully checked. Finally, 5 out of the 14 towers are possible to complete without ever taking damage. With this amount of towers, we can already access Ring 3. Sorry for the lighting changes, um, I, I'm, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit late right now. But, I think it's finally time to end off this video and split it into a series. In the next episode, coming out sometime this year, I will be taking a look at rings 2 through 4 and trying to progress further into the Great Inferno. Sorry this video is so rushed, I was trying to get it out before summer camp, but sadly that didn't, that didn't work. Anyways, remember everyone, stay in school, don't do drugs, and if you ever get bored of a game, um, make sure to challenge yourself or try something new, I don't know. I'll see you in the next one! See you, my fan bros.
I love you, my fan bros.